Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of Season News. Lots of great stories, all time marked down below, so you guys can bounce around to whatever stories you want to hear about. The first and big news, though, I'm sure many of you guys have heard about that. That, of course, is the current Space Soldiers roster trying to lead that organization after apparently for several years now being harshly underpaid. Now, of course, when these contracts were first signed, it might have been a fair payment, but due to recent rumors, allegedly these guys are only being paid anywhere around as low as $500 per month. Now, again, you guys are very well aware of what other teams are making out there. SK Gaming, Virtus Pro, Navi. Phase Clan. Those uh, contracts range from ten to twenty thousand, maybe even more than that per month. And apparently, these Space Soldiers' current roster is making as low as five hundred dollars per month. Even if it's anywhere near that, or actually double that amount, they are still being harshly underpaid. So, of course, as of right now and this morning, and me recording this, they did of course black out all of their Twitter banners and profile pictures. Kind of re a rebellious action by them to maybe get kicked by the organization. But you and I are very well aware of the fact this organization is never going to let a roster go, especially at such a steal of a price. These guys have done quite well in online matches throughout the past couple of years. We can name you know a few LAN events as well, one of them being TWC 2016. That prize pool money will not be paid out. They actually, a rumor did come out as well as an article about TWC 2016. Their sponsor was Azubu TV. Uh, the prize pool winnings of that tournament were not paid out to pretty much any team out there. So this is not just a case of space holders not be paying their players. That's a case of the actual tournament itself, TWC, not paying anyone else out there. But we do not know the, the details of other big event wins. I know one for sure was actually WESG 2017 where Space Soldiers came away at the second place finish and $300,000. Now no one knows how the contracts work out there. If they did get paid that prize pool money, we, we certainly hope so. But alongside that, even then, with their salaries being so low, if these guys are not winning any matches on land or online, they're certainly not making enough to live by. So you can understand as of right now where they've come to be with this organization for several years. One of CSGO's most longest active standing rosters and then being six members strong. They do have one of their newer members known as Despy because because he is actually their one player with a US visa, so they need him as a, as a stand-in whenever one of their players does not have visas worked out. But on top of that, it, you can understand for several years now these players making so little as to why they'd finally crack right now several years later and demand possibly more money. But of course, we've seen time and time again players signing these bad contracts. But again, you guys have seen everything so far. Apparently rumors leading to the fact that this Space Soldiers roster does want to leave the organization. And can you really blame them? Blame them? Certainly not. There have been many rumors as to where these guys might go, the first of which was made Jair tweeting out this and of course with the, the kind of letters he was using people thinking maybe he was trying to hint towards a French organization maybe buying him out and I don't even want to get that started because you know the French shuffle being underway I'll talk about that in a bit here who knows what organization could buy these guys out plenty of them actually do have the money to do so G2 MVS being the first ones at the top of your head LDLC probably not likely but of course 3D Max also coming back into the mix they might have the money to do so but again you have to understand these space holders this current roster being not only five members actually six members alongside a coach that's a huge buyout alongside also an ESL Pro League spot and most importantly also a major spot this could be a record-breaking buyout if an organization takes a risk at buying these guys out it's going to be a huge sum of money now also for the rumors out there could be not necessarily a French organization but also maybe a Turkish a Turkish football club I think it's actually Fenerbahce I could have mispronounced that entirely but apparently the Space Soldiers editor also tweeted out a picture of that team logo so as of right now the rumors do state and many of you are well aware I don't think it's a rumor right now. It's pretty much confirmed. This current roster does want to lead the Space Soldiers organization. The only question as to what the rumor is going to lead to and where these guys do want to go. Will it be a Turkish football club? Will it be a French organization? I think all of us can agree. We hope it's somewhere besides this Turkish organization known as Space Soldiers. Given the facts that we do know, we'll wait, of course, for an announcement from Space Soldiers. Maybe they'll pay these guys more money, but that's probably not the case. And it's now official. As mentioned yesterday, I thought maybe briefly mentioned again for all of you, we do have Nell, the French leaker himself, saying the French shuffle is a officially begun, as well as MVS newest member, and maybe they're, they're going to be an ex-member of that team pretty soon here. We did have Haji tweet out that, and of course say the adventure is now over. So, as of right now, a couple days ago, uh, the, the, these tweets being tweeted out, the French shuffle is underway. Please leave your guesses down below. I know you guys are still continuing to guess every single day the G2, MVS, and LDC rosters, LDLC rosters. No one really knows at this point. Still a guessing game, but on top of that, also big changes coming soon. We did have Dignitas replacing two of their members, uh, both Voltage and A2Z leaving that roster. They'll be replaced as well by Infinite and Rix. Now also most importantly, A2Z leaving Dignitas roster pretty much confirms that new Mo and Days, the kind of that stream team roster for next season Mountain Dew League. If you guys do not know that roster, it's going to be Mo, Days, of course, those two kind of the most iconic members in that team and could bring them some big viewership alongside No One Ocean and finally could be A2Z to round out the five-man roster. And again, they will be in Mountain Dew League next season and they will also be a stream team. So some big news coming their way and they will be playing under the team name known as Subtle. Now also, some other big changes coming sometime 
anytime soon for Team Sprout. My sources told us a couple of days ago on actual CSGO News, if you guys were here about that and watched the entire way through the video, it was indeed Synchrone. I think he's the, the ex-North Academy member who actually joined Team Sprout as their newest IGL. And apparently my source does say they're still undergoing contracts and other issues and trying to find their newest fit member. My source does say right now that the most likely will be a Danish member known as Percy. But although that is not confirmed right now, but Synchrone, as we said before, will be their newest IGL. Team Sprout still trying to finalize that roster over there. And in very sad news I touched on last week, if you guys were not aware of this, Captain Mo of Tai Lu, one of their better players, and of course, iconically named Captain Mo, certainly a strong player of that roster, did fall off his segue and actually managed to fracture his femur. Now, it's actually come out now as a femur neck fracture, so apparently going to be an undefined timetable as to when he'll be back. Until he is back, though, it'll be a 19-year-old, other known as AE, actually a Chinese player who's bounced from team to team, also just signed with the newest team as well. He will be on loan to Tai Lu, replacing Captain Mo for the time being. So no one knows as of right now when this guy will be back, but again, just a super sad story to hear. Uh, this guy was on a segue, and now he's not going to be playing CSGO for what could be quite a long time. Now also, lastly for roster changes, uh, as expected and actually leaked out there by, I believe by Flickshot or Decay, it was actually NRG replacing their coach, known as Emmy, with other no, otherwise known as the X-Optic coach, who took no time at all finding this new role, that is I'm a pet. So of course, formerly of X-Optic, formerly before that, and had many North American stints, he will continue his run in North America for Team NRG, who are currently on the rise, had a great ESO Pro League season, not so much in the finals wise, but still a great team for him to join, and it took him no time at all. Well, that, definitely really excited to see where he can take that roster. And also in huge CSGO news, but just in general in esports news. Now, I cannot give Fortnite enough credit. I know a lot of you guys are fans of it, but probably some of you and quite a bit of you are actually not fans of it. I don't really blame for all of you guys who hate on the game because it's taken over the entire esports world. It seems that every YouTuber, every streamer is now streaming or playing Fortnite at some level, and it does get a bit siring to see, but you cannot, you cannot really discredit these guys when it comes to listening to the community and making great updates, and I do have to give them more credit as well and shout them out because it does involve CSGO. We'll get into that in a little bit here, but Epic Games, of course, the owner and operator of Fortnite, have now announced a $100 million prize pool. That is $100 million in prize pool winnings throughout the 2018 and 2019 season. Now, why I'm sharing this is because it just it shatters all records. This actually does almost double the entire prize pool winnings of CSGO ever since its start back in 2012. So yes, in one single year, Fortnite will distribute almost double the prize money CSGO has had in over six years of operation. Now, on top of that as well, it also does beat out all 11 top esports events prize pool winnings combined. That means ever since 2014 to 2018, the top 11 esports events and their prize pools combined are now being outdone by just one year of Fortnite. And very lastly as well, it does in fact actually beat the record for all of 2017. All of 2017 top esports and their prize pool winnings. That means for the entire year of 2017, every single esport prize pool uh, winning, every single esports tournament combined, their prize pools combined are still less than this single exact prize pool amount done by Fortnite. Now I'm sure you guys are well aware these guys are making tons of money. I think allegedly as of right now, it's a couple hundred million dollars per month in skin sales. Now that number, that number could harshly be inflated, but nonetheless, putting a hundred million dollars into prize pool winnings and of course to make Fortnite into an, an official esport is going to be a shocking thing to see and props to Epic Games. They are doing it and, and infamously well. Uh, I don't really blame the thing that there was kind of two sides of the fence there. People saying, wow, Fortnite can fork up a hundred million dollars in one year, but CSGO, their largest major is just over a million dollars. I certainly don't judge that. We've already had the debate about, you know, whether CSGO should have one major per year and make it, you know, a $10 million major. I still love the, you know, you know two or three majors a year. I love that format. And that's really what defines CSGO from other esports out there. But nonetheless, this definitely deserves a, a thank you. Either way, Epic Games doing an incredible job. And a, we'll actually see if this $100 million is distributed or if it's kind of just a fictitious sum, which I believe it's probably going to be true. And very last in today's episode of CSGO News, I do have inside sources saying now it's not confirmed as of right now, but you guys are very well aware of Freakazoid's team known as Swole Patrol. They will be in Mountain Dew League next season. They just narrowly missed alongside teams like Torqued and, and other teams out there. Just narrowly, narrowly missed ESL Pro League. Uh, of course, they were actually in those those Mountain Dew League finals. Had a very small chance to make EPL. And them and Torqued, you know, of course, Dazed and Freakazoid being uh, some pretty top tier players, just fell short of making EPL spots. They will be back next season as well. Now, apparently, Swole Patrol is looking for a small roster change, not for Ryan Freakazoid, but for the other Ryan on that squad. So it's not confirmed right now, but expect maybe a possible Swole Patrol roster change before next season of Mountain Dew League. As always, I hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News. Thank you all for the amazing response on my last two episodes. You guys are absolutely insane. Expect either a double upload later today or uh, tomorrow morning as well. So thank you all for watching. And also, uh, the next video should be a dedicated video all about, of course, the Fierce Tiger and Vici Gaming situation. Have some great videos for all of you, some great updates on the whole Chinese situation and, uh, and just the corruption over there is, is absolutely
absolutely insane. And uh, if this is my last video, or if that's my last video ever made, then you know the Chinese Mafia probably took me down.